What up, what up, what up? Welcome into another edition of Green with Envy. As always, this is your boy Will. We are checking in. How you doing? How you living? Joining me today to discuss the beginnings of the free agency period, we have my podcast and cousin from across the pond, the leader of the Taylor gang, the one and only Adam Taylor. What's popping, Adam? Yo, what's good, man? What's good? Uh, it's been a it's been a wild few days, right? Like every time I check my phone, there's like news, like notable news. Well, well actually, there's today. news, or sometimes no news, thanks to Elon Musk. If you if, if you've exceeded your rate limit at this point, which couldn't have been the worst time for those of us in the NBA community. Yeah, I'm telling you, like I woke up this morning and saw him kind of poking fun at people, like, oh, the irony of not being able to see any more tweets because you've been rage scrolling my tweets about not. I'm like, dude, that's it. I'm done. He's the so worst. I went out, logged into my app, unsubscribed from Twitter Blue. I'm like, I'm done. Even if like, it made sense when it first came out for me to post new videos, long like longer videos and stuff. I barely use Twitter anymore. So yeah. I'm like, we haven't even I'm used it for our videos. But we've been posting our longer videos on YouTube at this point. So yeah, it's. I mean, honestly, it sucks. I was. It was funny though. I was texting a friend. I was like. Who's, who's been off the quote unquote grid, you know, doesn't have Instagram, doesn't have Twitter, doesn't, we kind of have to have at least some of that given, you know, what we're doing here. We need that platform. But I was just telling, I was asking them, man, where do you get your news? Cause I, unfortunately, I usually get my news from Twitter. And then if I see something, then I'll click into that link or I'll take, oh, hey, what's going on and insert, you know, this place in the world or if there's some, you know, free, you know, sports related thing. And then I'll Google search it. But I always kind of start from twitter so now i got to find a whole news source so basically the opening of this podcast is a big middle finger to elon musk that's that's what i think we're kind of getting at here i'm taking my 11 dollars or 11 pounds 15 dollars (laughs) away i hope it hurts elon because you bought this on yourself and i'm on instagram a lot more anyway so it's really not going to affect my life one slight little bit yeah, so if you're listening, make sure you're following us on Instagram. Follow us on YouTube. I'm sure we'll be doing a lot more content on both of those platforms. And as a programming note, tomorrow or today, depending on when you listen to this, Monday afternoon, 5 Eastern, 4 Central, your boys, myself, Adam, Greg, the entire three-man, we will be back on the Bleacher Report app. So make sure that you guys have the Bleacher Report app downloaded. We will be streaming on that service talking about free agency topic kind of to be determined so we'll we'll be on there talking about some celtics some free agency let's talk a little bit about it right now adam it's been a pretty busy three days around the nba celtics not quite as busy and a lot of that has to do with kind of being held captive by what's going to happen with grant williams and For his own sake, he's kind of had to let the market play out to see what's available. As of right now, Grant Williams, still one of the most coveted restrictive free agents still on the market. Most recent rumors have potentially his hometown Charlotte Hornets as coming in to make a restricted offer. Give me some of your thoughts here on just the landscape that's shaping up for Grant Williams. What's out there? What's not out there? I know you were big on Houston. It feels like Houston might be done at this point after some of the big contracts they gave out. So where are you at with Grant Williams here on Sunday morning as we record this? Yeah, so Houston, I feel like Houston are done. If there is any more moves they make, it's going to be such a fringe move. It's not going to be a Grant Williams move. Charlotte makes a ton of sense. I just don't know how they do it, right? Like. Yeah. They're over the cap already. They have the non taxpayer MLE, so they've got like that 12.4 million they can go and offer. The grant Boston would match that in a heartbeat if they just use the MLE. Um, so I think that maybe they decide against bringing back Miles Bridges. Maybe they decide to try and flip somebody just to open some cap space and then chase Grant. Grant would do well there. He'd be a good PJ Washington replacement anyway, because PJ might not be going back to Charlotte. Mm-hmm. I like Indiana. I think Indiana still make a ton of sense. I don't know if they've got the cap space or how they get there. They, they've already made some interesting moves. I mean, they, they signed have. Boston boy, Brucey B, even though Brucey I know Mike B. Malone thought Brucey B ain't leaving Denver. Well, he left Denver and he got paid handsomely to do so. You know, Bruce, shout out, shout out to Boston boy, Bruce Brown, man. That dude got a bag. Talk about $22 million for the NBA champion, Bruce Brown. Of course, there's a team option there on that second year. So I like that deal for Indiana. And then they went and traded for Obi Toppin. So that's the other part that maybe that Obi Toppin slot was an area where Grant Williams could have slid could in. Have he, he, still, he still might fit in there, but that could be another option that's, that's not quite as comfortable as a fit as it once was. Maybe Boston trying to get into this Miami-Portland t- deal as a freeway and 
try and slot Grant Williams in there on a sign and trade to Portland as part of the deal, try and bring Tyler Harrow back. I mean, I'm just throwing out names here. It's yeah, very, I mean, very I, unlikely. I, I but... mean, this is the thing. Right now, we're at the weird stage of free agency, right? And, and it's almost free agency plus trade season, especially with, and we'll talk a little bit about this here later in the pod, you know, Dame now officially on the block, James Harden on the block. And those are going to be trades that as you look at what each team is, what's going to make sense for each team, there's probably going to be multiple teams involved. And that's where, to your point, you know, Grant Williams could potentially be a player in that. Another team that I think is really interesting that may throw an offer out and still has some money to spend to San Antonio. San Antonio making a run at Grant Williams seems like a fit that might make sense. You know, him, Wemby, you know, they've got some some nice young players that go around that. You know, they haven't really made, at least from what we've seen, any real aggressive moves in free agency, but they still got some money to spend. I think Grant Williams feels like a guy that could fit there. But ultimately, what, what this really comes down to for those that, you know, on on whether it's Twitter or Instagram or whatever, wondering what else are the Celtics going to do? They can't really do much. They can't really do much until they figure out what happens with Grant Williams. And this is where we've seen, you know, Torian Prince goes for one year, four point five million. That's a guy I would have loved to have seen the Celtics be able to make a run at. But until they figure out the Grant situation, they could have never really got involved at that price point. You know, Jay Crowder back to the Bucks. We talked about him previously, you know, but the one move the Celtics have made is bringing in O'Shea Brissett. Two-year minimum deal, player option on that second year for him coming into the Celtics. He is a backup wing for the uh, excuse me for the Pacers last year. You know, Adam, any thoughts on his game and, and bringing him into the fold? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie; I haven't seen enough of him to be like this is what he brings, this is what he doesn't. There'll be a point before the season starts where I would have seen enough, but it's just not now. Yeah, I think that you know, we everyone was saying last season how Boston needed a backup wing behind Jalen and Jason. The Celtics didn't really have much money to spend. They go out, they bring in a young wing with some upside that can play backup minutes behind Jalen and Jason that cooked Boston in a game or two last season. Yeah, if you've you, if you only seen him in some of the Boston games, then you, you have a pretty high opinion of both shape or set. <laughs> But, but this is part of the Brad Stevens MO, right? A player cooks Boston. Brad's like, I'm just going to try and find a way to get them. <laughs> well, he can't hurt us if he's on our team, right? Well, that's exactly. At least, that's at least the thinking behind it. But, but you know, I think to your point, you look at Brissett and you look at their draft pick, Jordan Walsh, who we haven't talked a ton about here. And you bring in two guys that, as we talked about in the, you know, throughout the season, that Missoula really shifted this team to an offensive mindset. Both Walsh and Brissett come with, you know, their their best attributes being on the defensive end. And I think that's kind of where, you know, Brad's starting from here is how do we provide more defensive versatility on the wings? Then you have Sam Hauser, right? So those are really kind of the three main backup wings the Celtics have as it currently stands. You have Hauser, you have Brissett, and then you have Jordan Walsh, who we don't really know what his contribution's gonna be yet. He's, you know, he's a thirty number thirty eight pick, a rookie. But he comes in as a, you know, a McDonald's All-American just two years ago was, you know, in the top 10 of most people's high school rankings. So a guy that comes in with a certain amount of pedigree that you could argue slipped in the draft. And so with him, with Jordan Walsh and with Brissett, you have two guys that have some pretty high defensive upside to, to jump right into the rotation and grab some minutes. It's really going to be who can, you know, who can push their offensive ceiling to the next level that you feel comfortable on a night to night basis saying, Hey, when we need to spell the Jays or when we need to give one of the Jays a night off that this is a guy that we can then plug in for, you know, the nights the Jays aren't there, they can play 25 minutes and we still feel comfortable and the nights they are there, they can still play, you know, 15 and, and they can maybe guard the, the best wing player on the other team so that the Jays don't have to run themselves ragged. Cause that's what I think this is. For now, for now, this is good regular season depth. Will they be postseason rotation guys? We don't know. We just don't know yet. But I think as of right now, for sure, Brissett and potentially Jordan Walsh, they're both going to be good regular season depth guys. Yeah, out of the three depth guys, Hauser, Brissett, and Walsh, Walsh is clearly the best defender of the three. In terms of just execution, aggression, commitment, like Brissett's a really good defender, but Walsh just plays at a different level in terms of intensity. What do you think of Walsh? Give me, I haven't, I haven't I really like heard him. your thoughts on that. I, I think he's a, I think he's a really solid pickup. If you're trying to, you know, replace some of the defensive upside you lost by trading smart, I think mm-hmm. that Walsh comes in, gives you a lot. Uh, if you watch his defense, certainly plays, saying the right things. He's, yeah, he's saying the right things. He's carrying himself well. 
In college, he was really, really good at pressuring the ball. He pressured passing lanes, got a bunch of steals, was a decent rebounder as well to an extent. I think that out of the three, out of Hauser, Brissett, and Walsh, I'd actually not be very surprised if I saw Walsh kind of play above Brissett at times. Just because he's younger, he's got more upside because this is his first season. But offensively, I'm just I haven't seen enough. But from what from the, yeah. mi- the minuscule amount that I have seen, the offense just isn't really there right now. And I don't know how much that's going to make Missoula not want to put him on the floor. Have I told you that I, I I missed the opportunity to get the scoop on Jordan Walsh? Huh? So a couple of weeks ago, when I when I went to Puerto Rico. Uh, I had some, I think I talked about it on the show here. I had some trouble getting from Austin to Houston, which is where my connecting flight was. And so that night they had to put us up in this really crappy Radisson. Hopefully Radisson's not any type of sponsor that Blue Wire is ever going to use, but this really shitty Radisson hotel uh, near the airport. And, you know, it had been a long day of traveling and I was getting a little just exhausted, just waiting in line after line to, to, to fix flights and figure out, you know, what's the, the new travel path. And so we're in line at the Radisson. And I look in about, you know, three, four people in front of us. It's just this really tall guy. And I kind of caught a glimpse of his face. And this is a little bit before the NBA draft. Right. And so I hadn't done a ton of deep dives on the NBA draft. But I saw the faces like that guy looks familiar. And then I started thinking about it. And I was like, I think that's the kid from Arkansas, but I'm not positive. So I start Googling, you know, draft prospect from Arkansas, come up with Jordan Walsh. And I see the picture. I see the guy in front of me. He's really tall, really long arms. So the wingspan, I, I can vouch for. The wingspan is very, very legit. Seen it up, seen it up close in person. Uh, and I and I and I take his picture and I like slot it to my girlfriend. And I'm like, Yo, Lorena, is this? You think that's that dude? She took one look and was like, Yeah, it's 100 percent that dude. So that's my short interaction with Jordan Walsh. Is that I didn't. My short interaction is that I didn't have an interaction. I thought about having an interaction, but. Uh, could have been the scoop that Green with Envy needed. Could have made friends with with Jordan Walsh at the time. Obviously, no idea he would end up in Boston, but must have been in Houston for a workout and then got trapped in the travel travel delays that a lot of us were held up in. But can vouch, wingspan, very, very impressive in person. Do you think you could score on him? I know that you're a good catch and shoot. <laughs> catch Hell and no, shoot, bro. Right? Hell no. That dude's coming at me. I am doing, I'm trying to just, I'm just praying I get the shot off. You know, if it, if it banks in, or I hit it, you know, by a miracle, maybe. But yeah, if that dude's closing out on me, that wingspan is it's just it's already in my head now that I've seen you it. You see the wingspan, the problem with the wingspan is from the from the footage that I did watch, right? Was that you can beat him off the dribble, and if you go into a step back move, by the time you've rose up with the ball, his length on that wingspan has already closed out on you. Mm-hmm. He could be a few steps away, but his hand is there. Yeah. And it's just like, dude, it's like playing against. It's like a proper monsters thing where the arm stretches. I'm like, he has got really long arms. Well, because he was, I think he's six 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 seven, but his wingspan is over seven feet. I forget exactly what it yeah. is. Yeah, but it's and when Eminem said, "Whose arms are long enough to slap box?" Jordan Walsh was like, "Yeah, me." <laughs> he's like, "I got you, bro. I got yeah. you." But yeah, so I think I think Jordan Walsh is the guy. So I think O'Shea Brissett and Jordan Walsh kind of fall into that mix of wings. And I think depending on what happens with Grant, that's really what's left. And, you know, Torrey Craig still out there as a restricted free agent. That's still somebody that could potentially be out there. We've seen a lot of guys come off the market. So TBD, we'll see. Grant Williams really holds kind of the cards as to what happens next. The other part that we haven't seen happen yet this offseason for the Celtics, and we started seeing some of these extensions come in midnight Friday and through the last couple of days. DeMontis Sabonis just got his extension. We're still waiting to make Jalen Brown the highest paid player in NBA history still hasn't happened yet, but it seems like it's coming at some point, but hasn't happened yet. And I think everyone, I I, I say that kind of jokingly making Jalen Brown, the highest paid player in NBA history. That will be the case if he does sign for the super max that he is eligible for. But I don't think, and I think a lot of people are going to say, Oh my God, how can we make it? Like, listen, it's going to last for like, six months probably and then it's going to be surpassed and pretty soon he's going to be seventh eighth nine. it's going to it's it's really it's going to be an overreaction to that being the case for a brief moment but you know it is what it is i think it's coming soon but any concern on your part that it hasn't happened immediately or is this just listen it's gonna come but it's it's let's just sit back and wait before we panic yeah, I mean, some Celtics fans are panicking now, right? Like, what's the hold up? This is like this is a massive contract. It's the con- like as you said, it's a contract that makes you the highest paid player in NBA history right now. Underlining right now because, as exactly. you said, that's subject to change. What's the hold up? So, is the hold up from Brown's side? Have Boston put the offer on the table and Brown's mulling it over? 
is the hold up from Boston's side, and they're not really sure whether they want to give Jalen this much. Are they trying to lowball him and go, hey, you know, 35% of the caps to super max, 30% to max. Let's try and give JB 32.5% just to give us some wiggle room with Grant Williams. There's a few different, and I don't even know if the cap works that way. I don't think it does, but there's a few different reasons that I could think that it's being held up, but that doesn't mean that it, it makes me feel comfortable. Right. As you said, yesterday you saw Sabonis get a renegotiation and then extend, mm -hmm. similar to what Miles Turner did over in um, Indiana. Was it that last year they did that with a renegotiation? That was, was last, last year, year where they gave him like an extra 17 million and then they, they extended the off of, of that price yeah, exactly. point. It's a really smart yeah. way of doing things. Yeah. I don't understand why it would take so long in terms of Brown signing that deal because it's just so much goddamn money. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if it's from Boston's side. As you said, could they be waiting to see what happens with Grant Williams? Do they feel comfortable? Me personally, I still see this as a 9.8 out of 10 chance of happening. Yeah, But it's that point, 0 0.2 or 0 0.2 that make me sit back and think like, Shit, there's there's still a percentage of a chance that Brown yeah. don't sign this deal. I mean, there's always that not. There's always that not chance. That, that you know? not, 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 dude. But yeah, I mean, I think I'm with you. I, I think it's still 98, 99% likely to happen. It's a matter of when, why it takes a few extra days. Who knows? Maybe Jalen's on vacation and they were just like, hey, let me let me circle back to this on Wednesday. You know, but I, I would I would genuinely expect that this gets done in the next week at some point. I don't think this is going to linger on too long, but just because some have extensions have come down, it is worth noting. But Adam, let's, let's take a quick break right here and let's come back and let, let's hit some of the other topics around the year or some of the other free agency moves around the NBA. All right, Adam. So, you know, we talked about Jalen hasn't gotten his super max yet. We, we mentioned briefly Sabonis got his on a renegotiation. Tyrese Halliburton, Desmond Bain, LaMelo Ball, all of them have been signed to extensions in the last couple of days. We've got Harden on the trade block who opted in. We've got Damian Lillard finally requesting a trade out of Portland, which to me, the most head-scratching part of this is why the Blazers gave Jeremy Grant five years and $160 million, and then they get this trade request. I don't understand that. Fred Lamb, Bleed's got a bag. Adam, what's what's a move that you want to start with that you think is, is an interesting one for us to, to talk about here? Yeah, I mean, Fred Van Vliet getting a bag is interesting. Dante DiVincenzo heading over to New York is also very interesting. That has a little bit of an impact on Boston just because it's the same conference and mm -hmm. same, um, same division. So that's one that I like. I think that DiVincenzo really helps round things out for New York there. One that I wouldn't mind talking about is Josh Hart opting in rather than opting out yeah. and renegotiating the new deal. Um, if you look back, Josh Hart about two weeks ago spoke with Taylor Rooks, um, talking about like <laughs> um, talking about how he was going to opt out. Yeah, how Taylor Rooks <laughs> talking about how he was going to opt out and then test a uh, free agency after that. After that uh, end to the season that he had comes to it, he opts in. I think that, you know, maybe he personally, I'm like, is he banking on himself to reproduce what he did for New York towards the end of last season? Has he got like a little handshake deal with New York that they're going to extend him during the season? So why even deal with free agency when you can just sign? I mean, you know what I think extension? it is? Hook your boy up. Yo, he's trying to re reunite the Villanova squad. So he's got, he knew if he, if he opted in right at that, cause he probably could have got 15, $16 million on the open market, maybe even more. Like, yeah, I man. mean, I'm a big Josh Hart guy. I mean, if like, if Bruce Brown's getting 22, Josh Hart is in, I mean, I think Josh Hart and Bruce Brown fill similar roles on good teams, right? They, they bring similar qualities, not the exact same player, but they bring similar qualities to those type of teams. So he certainly could have got a bag this year, but, you know, him opting in allows for New York to have their full tax mid-level and they go and bring in his homie, Dante DiVincenzo. So now they've got DiVincenzo, they've got Josh Hart, they've got Jalen Brunson. They're just missing Mikhail Bridges right now, right? And then they've got the entire Villanova squad back together. So to me, I think I, think, I thought it was a really cool move by Josh Hart, I, you know, as a Celtics fan. And the Knicks gave the Celtics a lot of trouble last year. You know, them bringing in a guy like DiVincenzo, who's a little bit more of a consistent shooter around the Brunson, Randall, 
you know, Barrett mix that they have. Like, that's a team that's given the Celtics some trouble. And it gives them a, a lot of flexibility, but they still have, you know, quickly grimes, draft picks. They still have another move. And, you know, there's rumors that they're kind of lurking in the Dame sweepstakes. I don't like that move for them. I think Dame and, and Jalen Brunson, as much as I like both of those guys separately together, that's a weird backcourt that I don't think makes a lot of sense. But that's, that's a great move for the Knicks as well. You know, on the Fred Van Vliet, I think that's more interesting almost for what it does to the Raptors. Because I think from a Houston standpoint, I kind of like what they're doing, minus giving Dylan Brooks four years. You know, I, I'm just, I think most of us on this podcast are out on Dylan Brooks, but I like the idea of what they're doing. They have this young, talented core, but they were a mess of a culture. So let's go get some adults in the room. We bring in, you know, Ime Udoka, who's going to bring some, you know, quote unquote accountability on, on the court, at least maybe not off the court, but on the court, some accountability to, to that franchise as to playing defense and, you know, having the right mindset. So I like what they're doing as far as their timeline and setting up their young players to learn from Van Vliet, to learn from Jeff Green, to learn from Patty Vliet. Mills. They're Patty got- Mills. They might reroute him. I think I saw, but, but still they're, they're building it correctly, you know, but I think with the, with the Raptors, and this is an area where, I don't know if the Celtics would be able to get involved, but this once again is going to circle back to what the Celtics can do with that Brogdon contract potentially. And with some of the draft picks they have, because now, now that Toronto has lost Fred Van Vliet for nothing, they're at a position. What do you do? Cause you got OG and Pascal Siakam on expiring deals. And I don't think the Celtics are going to be able to get involved for those guys. Maybe OG, but I, but once again, this kind of goes to what you were saying with Grant Williams earlier. There's going to be a lot of weird deals out there that need salary and the Celtics might be able to get themselves in the mix here and get some assets. I don't know where that's going to come from, but it feels like the Raptors may have some moves that, that they might be making in the near future as well. That could tangentially involve the Celtics in some way. Oh, tangentially. Um, I like it. I like it. Good use of vocabulary. Will <laughs> <laughs> I do my, I'm, I'm on my second cup of coffee today. So the brain, yeah, boy, I'm on a, I was going to make a coffee, but I, I needed to get up to my desk. So I'm on a vanilla Coke zero, which is absolutely trash. Um, <laughs> what was I going to say? I mean, if you're Toronto and you've gone from Fred, Fred Van Vliet down to Dennis Schroeder and everyone listening to this show knows my opinion on Dennis Schroeder, something went terribly wrong. Uh, at that point, just hit the reset button, man. Just blow it up. Try and get your assets back. Boston could be in there as um as a facilitating team. I think there's a world where we do see Boston floated as in rumors as a team that could be a facilitator, just because they do have some fringe guys, they do have some draft assets that they can kind of put in there to bring something back or to kick the can down the road for them, so to speak. So they're not having to answer these big questions every six to twelve months. Mm-hmm. Outside of those, is there any other moves that you really like? Moves? I mean, the one thing that I was kind of thinking of with some of the moves thus far in the offseason is I don't think there's been any landscape changing moves, right? Like, I think all the contenders that were contenders going into they're still contenders. There's, you know, the Raptors are not fringe as, as close to the fringe of the playoffs anymore with losing Fred Van Vliet. But when you look at the top tier of, NBA teams. I mean, the Celtics are the closest thing to me to making a really monumental move, you know, bringing in Chris Stapps, Porzingis, you could argue, you know, the same for the Grizzlies bringing in Marcus Smart is a pretty, you know, a pretty big move for them, obviously. But I, I just, I just, I'm interested to see, I think everything kind of hinges on what happens in this James Harden, Dame Lillard, Miami Heat, Brooklyn Net, you know, triangle square how many ever teams end up getting involved here like i think that's really going to hinge on if there's a big difference going into you know into the regular season is if those teams have movement because you know the bucks ran it back but they're getting old and so you know the the dallas mavericks bring back Kyrie because they kind of had to and you're actually starting to see, you know, there's a little bit of Luca watch. There's a little bit of Giannis watch, depending on what the Sixers do. There's a little bit of Embiid watch out there. Those are probably the most interesting storylines to me coming out of this free agency right now is that some of the, you know, three out of the top five, six, seven players in the league may be on watch as the next superstars that, that could be on the move, you know, with Dame. And let me just ask you this real quick here, Adam. I think a lot of Celtics podcasts are going to rehash the Dame Lillard for Jalen Brown, Dame Lillard to the Celtics. We don't need to do that, do we? We're, we're above that at this point, right? See, I yawned. It was a natural yawn. It wasn't <laughs> a fake yawn, but it was just perfectly timed, right? It was um, tired, man. 
it was the, I'm completely out of on the damn thing just because of the contract, dude. How much are you going to be paying him? Like what? I think the final year of his extension is like 62, 64 million dollars. He's going to be 36. Like, no, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't, I don't even Why think it makes sense for the Blazers to, as much as I love Jalen Brown, I don't have a problem with the Celtics giving him a super max. You know, the Blazers bringing Jalen Brown and making him the centerpiece. I think the reason I have a, no problem with the Celtics giving Jalen Brown a super max is because you have Jason Tatum. If you have Jalen Brown as your number one, you're essentially forming you know, the wizards with Brad Beal to a certain extent, right? If that's your number one, if you're going to have a very, dribble. yeah, you're going to, yeah, exactly. You're going to have a very low ceiling with a non dribbler. And that's not, that's not going to be a great way to go. So I, you know, I think it just doesn't make sense all around. So I don't think that's a topic that, that we need to do, but give me your, give me your favorite move that you've seen so far this off season, Adam. And then we'll, uh, and then we got a special vibe check that we got coming up here. Yeah, I mean, favorite move, uh, I'm biased, but it's got to be the Paul Zingas move because it was the biggest move. I mean, um, I think that's the biggest is in terms of, like I just said, like I laid out, you know, in terms of title implications, I think that's the biggest move so far. I think so too. And it also means that we have plenty to cover. Honestly, that probably is my favorite move. I mean, so many have happened. Um, Which, by the way, we I should touch on a lot the, of them the, the, two years, the two years, $60 million extension. Another shout out to Brad Stevens here. And and maybe that's only partially shout out to Brad Stevens because we got the Mark Stein two year, $77 million report early on. So maybe that savings, maybe it was always going to be two years, 60. But when you see two years, 60 versus the two year, 77, it feels like another W for Brad Stevens. Yeah. And you got to shout out Chris Stapps Porzingis for taking a little bit of a discount there as well. Like he hasn't played a single game in front of the TD Garden crowd yet. Hasn't felt that intensity. He hasn't dealt with the expectations the amount of um, blasphemy that will come at him through Boston Sports Radio, you know, WWEI guys. Yes, I'm taking a shot. Um, I just think that to take that money early, to, to be like, no, I understand that I'm going to be in a winning position here, says a lot about where Boston are in there. I like to call it like a life cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So it tells you a lot about where the Celtics are in their lifestyle, life cycle right now because you're bringing in another star that's already winning having got no relationship with the fans to take a little bit less because he knows that he's going to be in a place where he can genuinely contend and listen i like jeremy grant jeremy grant at 32 million chris Stapps brzingis at 30 million i'm very happy with that deal feels like good value yeah especially when james harden's probably heading back out west as well that always helps yeah, so I like that deal. I think the Celtics are in a good position. We'll have to check back in as we wait on Grant Williams to make a move. But let's take a break here, and then we're going to welcome welcome in the third man here of the three-man weave, and we got to get a special vibe check. What up, bro? What up, fellas? What it do, baby? What it do? What up, what up, what up? Welcome to another <laughs> episode. Let's go. All right, so we, we've already decreed vibe check. Is, this is just going to be your show. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tee it up, and then this is this is the Greg show. Sounds good. It's but, all uh, on you, uh, yeah, baby. I'll, I'll talk, but you know, like be normal, ask questions and stuff. Yeah, I mean, we'll jump in, but we'll <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're not just going to use it as a zoom. <laughs> are, are we uh, we got to edit this out of the podcast, of the the YouTube episode as well. This little bit could, or we could just be like, hey, this is the behind the scenes content you get if you follow us on YouTube. All right, but. Yeah. So what up, YouTube? Only you guys are seeing this. This is, this is the good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> we figure out how to segment. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. So as we've talked about, we have a very special vibe check for y'all today. Uh, it's been myself and Adam here leading up to this, but we're welcoming in the third member of the three-man weave. Our guy, Greg Menakis, is here who has some free agency news of his own. So, Greg. I'm, I'm going to let you take the floor here and uh, give Adam and I the scoop. Well, if you follow Green with Envy at Green Envy Pod on Twitter, you saw the retweet, uh, the quote tweet, which was much appreciated. I didn't know that was going to happen. And I thought it was really well done. You know, the lifetime deal tweet. That was great. I also like how you're using uh, you're starting to use the word buddy. Which is interesting. Like you've never been a buddy guy, and now all of a sudden you're calling people buddy. Well, it's, What's it's up a, with that? It's a it's a buddy on. I would never say it probably in person, but it's like it's like an online persona. I can say you can okay. say buddy in <laughs> in written form, but I I, I, I feel I, like if I feel like it's, I feel like buddy in person is more confrontational. I feel like in really I use buddy all the time. 
I think it, maybe it depends how you use it. I'm just used to like, you know, dickheads in, in Dorchester who would say buddy and it's like, hey, all buddy. right, bud. Yeah. All see, right, buddy. Like, like, Greg, I mean, you see, I'm like, oh, I'm in the way. Sorry, buddy. And I'll move out of the way. <laughs> well, when you say it like that, it sounds delightful. <laughs> yeah. If someone called me buddy like that, I'd be like, oh, that's my friend. But like in it, where we grew up, it's like, all right, buddy, like, what's your problem? You know, yeah. so Will Will saying buddy on that, like I read the word buddy as somebody from Dorchester. With an attitude. And then Will, you called Adam buddy uh, in our group message earlier on the way to the pod. And I was like, oh, <gasps> Will's, Will's just a buddy guy now. Like, like is Will mad at Adam right now? What's going on? I feel comfortable putting it in, in text. I don't feel comfortable saying it. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to how to. So now I'm that, reading but... that sounds good buddy back and I'm using your like <laughs> safety. Like, sounds good buddy. I'm like, what the fuck? Dude? Sounds good pal. All right. All right, pal. Anyways, that, we've, I've already derailed. I've already derailed the vibe check. Um, so the big news for your boy, uh, I finally made the leap and I asked my now fiance, Danielle, to marry me yesterday. And bro, I mean, that shit is the most overwhelming sensation I've ever felt in my life. I was nervous as all hell. Um, I ended up proposing at one of the spots where we like started our relationship and the vibe started to be right. Uh, it's like a coffee shop where um, when we were teachers together, we would go there and like lesson plan and shit like that. Office romances, they happen. Sometimes they work out. Sometimes they work out everybody. So if you're out there and you see a girl <laughs> at your shot. office that you like, shoot the shot, shoot the shot. Respect. Um, yeah. I mean, you could end up like Max Cruz and get $64 million over four years, you know, just shoot that shot, see what happens. Uh, yeah, but we, we end up at this place, shout out to batch in Austin, Texas. Um, I didn't, I knew that I was going to propose that day, right? I texted will and I was like, bro, like, I think we're going to have something to celebrate tomorrow. Cause he was asking me if we wanted to get together uh, today where we're, we're at, we are going to get together. We're about to go get dim sum. And, um, so I'm like, all right, do I want to do it at batch? Because it's a, it's a place we also signed uh, papers to buy our house there. And I was like, all right, I'm going to bring the ring just in case. But the vibe's got to be right because Danielle did not want a public engagement. So Batch sometimes can have like a pretty uh, low key environment where there are not a lot of people there. It's a pretty big backyard. So we roll up and I see two tables out of like 20 are full. OK, so we, we end up we get a couple beers. I needed the beer because I was freaking the fuck <laughs> out. And we, we go back to this table kind of in the back left corner of the of the backyard and I'm just a nervous wreck. I'm like looking for other spots in the yard that we might be able to go there a little bit more secluded. What seals the deal for the spot we end up going at going to will, you know how much I hate fucking bees and hornets and wasps and shit. So there's this like little outside wooden bar right next to where we're sitting. And I look up and underneath there's a hornet's nest of I shit you not at least 20 hornets, but like hyperbolic me, there's like a hundred hornets. Right. So I'm like, it would be so also, just, just real quick to interject. Greg has a horrible history with bees. Like Adam, I'm pretty <laughs> sure like as a kid, it was routine that like semi weekly Greg would get stung by bees. I don't know. You just had a really, really bad history. With these. Bro, the first time I ever met her like extended family was in New Hampshire and we were supposed to go on this big boat day and I got stung in the face by like a, a ground hornet and my face just started swelling up. So they were like, you, you might need to go to the hospital, but I'm like two hours away from Boston. So I start driving back and her dad like followed me halfway just to make sure that I like didn't go into anaphylactic shock on the road. Um, so that's like, I, I was like, it would be me as I'm proposing to get stung by hornets. Right. So I end up going off to like the side of the building. So now there's two tables, right? One table only has one person facing away from us. And the other table is just a group of four that aren't really paying attention. But within a minute, they leave and they go inside because it's like also like 100 degrees here, right? So it's just one person left and they're facing the other way and really not paying attention at all. So um, I'm nervous. Normally, I can carry a conversation. I could not carry a conversation. I was not listening to anything that Danielle was saying. And she tried to fill the air because she could tell I was being a little awkward. She First, she was like, why are your ears so red? Like, you're really flush right now. Like, what's going on? Are you, like, too hot? Do we need to go inside? And, like, that's what happens with me when I get nervous and embarrassed. My ears, that's the first thing that gets red. So I'm like, fuck, she can, like, tell something's up. But she just thought, like, and luckily it was 100 degrees. So she, she had no idea. But... Um, um, we're sitting there. So she's trying to fill the air and she can be pretty awkward at times. So she starts talking about how weird it is 
that human beings are really just bones and skeletons in meat sacks and how strange it is that we have these veins and capillaries and tendons and ligaments and it's all just a vessel to carry around our consciousness. This is literally what she's talking about as I'm sitting there like about to propose, right? And I'm like, this is like, can I, how do I transition away from this like Daniel hey talking about what you've been practicing for when I'm out, when I'm out on vacation. How so, do you make the transition? Exactly right. So, in speaking and I actually learned consciousness. Uh, speaking of, yeah, right? <laughs> speaking of consciousness, this has been uh, something that's been on uh, my conscious thought for a while now. So I'm just sitting there, and then I'm like, all right, I got to do this. But I go to the bathroom. Like I went to the bathroom like three times within like 45 minutes. I was nervous, so I go back to the bathroom. I like rehearse what I want to say one more time. I come back out. I sit down. She's still talking about weird shit at that time. She's now she's talking about how it's weird that there are people that their jobs are to reconnect nerves. She was like, how weird is it that people can just like reconnect nerves and all of a sudden like nerves work? <laughs> right. So I, I'm just like, all right, I just got to fucking do it. So I take one deep breath. I look, I look at her eyes and I just start crying. I didn't even get one word out before I just started crying. And, I, and she's like, wait, like what's going on? And I'm like, I didn't plan to do this today, but you know, it just feels right. And I think. I asked her to marry me there. I don't know if I said, do you want to spend your life with me or whatever? But we're just like both messes, just crying, like looking in each other's eyes, like this moment, this beautiful moment. And I think I, I did the proposal like three different times because after the first time that I did it, I was like, I don't even know that I asked her to marry me. So I like re, re like started back at the beginning and I just like started talking about all the things that I love about her and our relationship. And um, next thing I know, there's a ring on her finger and we're taking some selfies. And uh, then we started telling people, man. Then we started telling people, telling the whole world. And it was a beautiful day. We ended the night at uh, Barchi and got some sushi. And then went to upstairs at Caroline's and uh, got a margarita. And then, yeah, great night. Where, where does the snipe come into it? <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a great great point. So. Um, I, real quick, I think you have to be. I think that was only on. Was that on on your Instagram? That, that yeah. was on Instagram. Okay, okay. Yeah. So make sure you're following at Manakis underscore music on Instagram if you want to understand the story a little bit more, just to provide some context. Yeah, that was not a euphemism for sex. Like this is an <laughs> actual take. Um, <laughs> Congrats on the sex. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, bro. I mean, uh, it was uh, kind of a given, right? Like you just got engaged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we. Um, I'm FaceTiming with my family and, and whatnot. So my brother FaceTimes me and his five-year-old, uh, my nephew, Lucas, is like, you know, he's a little upset that Danielle's now has to be called Auntie Danielle. But you could see it on his face. He wasn't like a super fan of having to call her Auntie Danielle now. Bro, and I already got like, so many aunts here. I don't need another aunt right now. Right. I've already, I've right. already got them memorized. <laughs> buddy. So Come he, on, buddy. rather than talk about the engagement, because like you can't converse with a five-year-old about an engagement. So I'm like, how are you, buddy? And he goes, I'm going to go see amphibians tomorrow. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like I can carry a conversation about amphibians and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, like, are you going to go see any snakes? And he's like, yeah, I love snakes. I'm like, I just picked up a dead snake outside my house just a couple of weeks ago. Like, do you want to see it? And he's like, what kind of snake is it? And he's like, super excited about that. So I'm like, all right, I will, um, I'll send you a picture of the snake and it's a big fucking snake. So I hang up the phone and I send the, uh, the picture to my brother. So immediately like our convert, our text thread was about the engagement and whatnot. And then like the next thing on the text thread is just this picture of a dead snake in a dustpan. <laughs> just like me and my brother going back and forth talking about what type of snake this must be. So I took a little screen recording of it and I put it on Instagram because I thought it was just so perfect how little brothers need to actually talk about the exciting stuff in life, these big life moments. And it's much more interesting to talk about what type of snake I had to pick up and put in a dustpan and throw over the fence. What snake was it? Uh, so it was either a Texas, like a King snake or a Texas glossy snake, but the King snake can get up to like three and a half feet. And this one, so think about a dustpan, right? A dustpan's what, like a foot, a foot long, roughly. 
So this thing goes, it curls around like four times within and outside the dustpan. So it had to be at least three feet. I'm going to say like, I could probably go measure the dustpan right now to figure out exactly how long this snake is. So I think it was more like four to four and a half feet. And if that's the case, then it's probably a glossy so did, snake. Did you find it dead or you killed it yourself? Bro, I come, I come home, right? I come home from work and there's... By the way, we, we uh, might be on the same wavelength as a <laughs> few because we have completely diverted from... Yeah, I mean, we said congratulations <laughs> like yesterday though, right? Like, I'm just like, yo, what about this snake? When's the wedding? Where's my invite? And those are my three <laughs> questions while I'm doing after that. <laughs> so I, I come home and there's just huge fucking snake just right outside my door. And I, I'm like, ah! You know, thinking it's gonna like, like get me. And... It was dead. I had to go and I had to like okay. poke it with um poke it with with a I think a brush or something like that. I started poking it and it didn't move. So yeah. I knew that it was my job to take care of it because Danielle was not moving that snake. And I didn't want to leave it there and like see it decompose. Cause I don't really go out my front door much anyway. I usually go through my garage. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, and I just picked it up in the dustpan. And as I do with most things, I just threw it over my <laughs> my backyard fence because there's just like open clearing. So like any anytime I'm doing yard work, I just literally throw shit over my fence. I threw my Christmas tree over my fence. I throw a lot of shit over my fence. <laughs> so I, I ended up throwing the snake over the fence as well it's not an open clearing anymore it's, it's not even a clearing it's just open no and there's i mean there's coyotes back there and shit um my my dog the other day jumped on the fence and grabbed a possum off the fence and ripped it down and started shaking it around and i had to uh bring him inside because he's eaten possums before like i've caught him throwing up possum tail yeah so he he was fucking this possum up one morning and i i had to go save the possum yeah, that's what I got. It's about I mean, congratulations again, though, man. I mean, it's such a dope story. And the, the part about the hornets kind of sent me off track for a minute because I'm thinking, how many times has this guy been stung? Because it was it's... only a few weeks back that you're telling us about being stung by a fucking scorpion. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I get stung all the time, bro. Insects. I when we were on the river uh, last week for our guy Ted Barry. Shout out Ted. Um, I got stung by like a fire ant was just on my float. So as I'm floating down the river all of a sudden i just feel something on my neck and i just like smack my neck and there's a fucking fire in if you've ever been stung a bit by a fire and those things fucking hurt it hurts as much as a bee sting there i'm not gonna lie Greg. there was part of me that when you said you were under a hornet's nest that i started envisioning that if you had still gone through the proposal but you couldn't see your face that you turned into will smith from hitch <laughs> and so and then it was like i i there was part of me because i've seen the photos you guys took like now i'm imagining your like your face ballooned like will smith yeah. you guys were still taking <laughs> the engagement photos and i kind of wish that happened <laughs> and part of me was like damn greg got stung by like 20 hornets danielle saved him and that's what made him that would have been a hell of a story I was like that's that was where i was expecting this story to go. i mean it turned out a lot more sweet and a lot less violent <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> modern society has ruined us but now nah, man that's a okay, sorry henry stop story um <laughs> <laughs> it's a dope story man i was just really curious where i stayed wait I, I do have one quick follow-up on it yeah so i know that it kind of turned into one of those like will ferrell in the debate scene of old school where you're just like i just blacked out like i don't even yeah, know what sure. happened but at some point did you ever get on a knee oh yeah i was okay. immediately me, immediately okay. on the knee so she so, was so sitting that was down when the conversation started is like when you grabbed her hand and like you got on got on one knee yes i got on, okay. i got on one knee because i when i stood up because we were on wood chips when i stood up that like all of the wood chips were just glued to my knee and i was like god damn it that kind of hurts <laughs> <laughs> okay so the other question i've got is because obviously i don't know how long did she make you wait until you said yes or is it just like before you've even finished your sentence because sometimes like people are just fuck around won't they and they'll just be like mm. <laughs> well what happened to you adam did you did you get a delay and, and, nah, and you're the only other one here that that's proposed so you're the only other one that would have a, a counter story no like mine was different mine was like i'd planned on proposing anyway and we'd, we ended up one day just having an argument and uh you know when you have a disagreement and it escalates and like, i was just like dude how can i just shut this car up <laughs> I, I'm imagining, uh, Adam, do you watch The Bear? Have you seen the show The Bear? I have not seen the show The Bear, Adam but I have heard it's very good. Okay, you need to watch that show. But that that, that just makes me think of the scene, Will, with uh, Richie and Carmi arguing through the through the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> and Richie's just like, 
I fucking love you. I fucking yeah. love you. <laughs> yeah, it's like saying the worst shit you could say to each other, but all in this in the vein of love and then yelling in that same angry tone that you love each other. Okay, Donna. I fucking love you, <laughs> Donna. So what did you get the straight? Did you get the fast chest or did you get the delay? So we don't even know, like we were talking about it afterwards, and she was like, did I even say yes at any point? Or did I just like shake my head yes and cry? Because she was crying. She was a mess. She was like, that all the makeup good. that she had on, it just like rolled down her face. Um, yeah, but she, I mean, we're super happy. I got her, her birth. So went with a little bit of a non-traditional ring. So she's a September baby. So got her sapphire like a green sapphire sapphire is normally blue so i got her green sapphire shout out green with envy she even said she goes did you get me a green ring because of the celtics and i was like no i swear to god i didn't i just i literally hadn't thought engagement about rings now sponsored by green with envy right exactly and then there's um it's almost like a little crown of diamonds on top of the ring and then there's space underneath the ring for like the wedding band. Like there's like a complimentary band that you could like fill the circle of diamonds around the ring. So that's dumb. whenever, yeah, whenever we get married, um, I'm sure. And we do, do bro. So f- fucking hilarious. Right. So this morning I wake up um, and, you know, we take the dogs to the park. I, we get back. I'm making coffee, making breakfast. And I look over at Danielle. She's on TikTok. And she's just like listening to wedding things out loud. She's like following all these wedding things. And I'm like, you're already on like wedding TikTok. And she was like, I've, I've been on wedding TikTok. I just like, haven't done it around you. So like now I'm free <laughs> to just like play all this wedding shit out, out loud in the room. So we spent about an hour this morning uh, making our tentative uh, list of people that we could invite to the wedding. So think about how many family do you think is already on the list? At least a hundred. Yeah, yeah, probably 100. somewhere in that range. Around a hundred, around a hundred. It's crazy. So we were like, "Damn!" Like already around a hundred. That's why I loved it. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot. So we we already started that process. Um, she's looking at wedding dresses already, and she's super excited, man. I'm, I'm I couldn't be happier. She's she's the best. Well, we're thrilled for you, man. Uh. You know, obviously, as being my best friend, I'm very, very your buddy. emotionally I'm your supportive buddy. right now. You're my buddy. You're my buddy. You're my buddy. So. <laughs> my best buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're super happy for you. Um, I'm really excited to to hear more about it. You and I are going to go get together here in a few. Um, but man, congratulations. Shout out to you. Shout out to Danielle. Uh, really excited for the future that you two have together. So thank you for sharing that story today. We really appreciate it. That's all we need for a vibe check. Adam and I agreed before you got on. That's the vibe. The vibe is what you guys are bringing here. Uh, yes, sir. Big weekend, big weekend here for us here. With a quick shout, quick shout to our our friend Bridget, who also got engaged. To our girl Bridget, loving basketball. She proposed on the basketball court. One of our other friends, Adam. That's fucking uh, sick. Same day, yeah, it's great. She has her knee brace on and everything. She wasn't playing around. She she really really went into it. So uh, shout out to our good friend Bridget as well out in St. Louis uh, that got married or got engaged this weekend, I should say as well. But. That's going to do it for this episode of Green with Envy. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the podcast, join us tomorrow or today, depending on when you listen to this, Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central. Download the Bleacher Report app, Three Man Weave, coming at you, TBD, free agent topic around the Boston Celtics. We will be live on there, chopping it up with everybody. So jump into the chat. like to get everybody involved. Uh, but, Greg, anything special you want to leave us with today? You know, any special message? And then, of course... Let us know what we're going to hear on the way out. Um, no, I, I used up all my special messages this weekend already. I got I got nothing nothing special that's left. You're going to hear some black sheep optimists who Danielle said is not allowed to play at our wedding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's already the <laughs> – it's already been decided. I said, I said, what if what if Black Sheep Osmond has a hit song by that point? Like, what if, what if, like you know, like, can I get one song? Can I perform one song? She was like, no. I was like, one thing we did talk about though, just real quick, because we're one more thing, King. We were talking about like ways that we can make the wedding cool. And be like, oh, what if we had like a little recording studio set up so that people could go in there and like record messages that we could somehow like turn into some podcast or something like that. So um we're we're, we're brainstorming. So all ideas welcome. With that, you're gonna That'd be dope if you allowed it to like. There had to be a rule, right? So you have to.
to if you want to use the recording studio fine but you have to record one when you first get there and you have to record one when you leave so oh, you can that's just like that hit... trend where it's like hi my name's will this is my first drink exactly and then, yeah, but you just yeah, do yeah. it hi this is so and so and while walking into the wedding party hi this is so and so we're fucking leaving I, yeah, like just I like that yeah so we're 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 planning some shit out um with that you're gonna hear some black sheep optimists this is our new release um called questions and lies we got more new music coming out soon so stay tuned actually you know what fuck it we're gonna play skywalking because the vibes <laughs> peace everybody. last minute pivot y'all <laughs> peace <laughs>